I, I'd like to start at the beginning. And I, I call that beginning immaculate conception. Apparently there was nothing. Absolutely nothing, we are told. And then we are told, we, we are told there was a big bang, which sounds like a mother trying to explain to a child what happened. It seems those two words, those two words sound almost like an orgasm. But we apparently began with a, just a big bang which is incredibly strange. Yeah. I would like to see that as an immaculate conception. The beginning of possibility. And from that, from that nothingness or apparent nothingness, solar systems were formed in an expanding theater called space. And right now we are on a tiny little hunk of rock going round a hot gas ball called the sun. And that's where we are right now. somewhere in the universe. We don't actually know where we are. And then slowly, over billions of years, the dust coalesced into a planet, the planet where we now find ourselves on. And after a great deal of time, the forces sorted themselves out. And when the fire had subsided, the molten surface began to harden. And then at some point, water appeared. And then from there, the first beginnings of life. We have that within ourselves. We are the first beginnings of life, as much as we are here present now. And so from the singular celled beings came the more apparently complicated beings. There was the era of the dinosaurs. That has passed. We're now living in the era of the mammals, of which we, each one of us, is one. And then at some point, a particular group of mammals came down from the trees and started to live on the savanna. They rose up from four legs and stood on their hind legs. They began to live in small groupings. And then they discovered how to make fire. And that changed absolutely everything. And 32,000 years ago, our early brothers and sisters were sitting in a cave in southwest France, drawing pictures on the wall. Have you seen those pictures that our brothers and sisters have drawn? And they began to inhabit consciously the present. 
And we look at history. When we go back in history, we tend to look at two types of history. The history of the arrival of this planet within the solar system, and then we concentrate on the history of ourselves. Some of the earlier skulls that have been found in Africa contain two puncture marks just here, just above the hairline. And at first, anthropologists were confused about what these puncture marks might be. And then they worked out they were the teeth of a big cat. So before we became what we are now, we were prey. And it's very important that we should each recognize that. We were prey. We were food for other animals who hunted us. And that's fine. That's fine. It was just the way it was. And then our earliest, our earliest, our earliest engagement with the present. We came into the present. When I look at the Chauvet Caves in southern France, I see an emerging consciousness into the present. The men and women there draw, drew beautiful paintings on the wall of the life that surrounded them. Horses, lions, antelope, bear. And if you can see yourselves as living in that cave and emerging in the morning into a world full, full of life, of other animal life, we now live in a world so denuded of other animal life. But our earliest grandmothers and grandfathers lived in a world full of life. That is humanity coming into the present. Since then, we have begun to build a past. And we call this history. And we are obsessed to a certain degree with our own history. How we have arrived. Where we are now. On this planet. Each one of us. And having discovered how to make fire, then the natural progression from there was weaponry, jewelry, and some of the staggering buildings that we now live in. So we created a present, we inhabited the present. And now, many of us inhabit both the present and as human beings here today on this planet. We inhabit the past. The next great step for all of us is to learn to inhabit the future. Consciously. This is something that we have not begun to do yet as a species. And the reason why when we look into the future, and I overheard several of the discussions that were happening, isn't because human beings are evil and selfish and self-centered. It is because each one of us now has to learn consciously to inhabit the future. That in each one of us there is the past. There is the present, which is so gorgeously vivid and so hypnotically vivid. But now is the time in the conscious evolution of our species that we need to begin to consciously claim and stand in the light of the future in all that we are and in all that we do. It is too simple to blame politicians. 
and priests for the state that we now find ourselves in. And many of us are here today because we acknowledge that it has reached a perilous point, not only for ourselves, but for our brothers and sisters living on this planet. That is why now it is a matter of urgency that we see ourselves as inhabiting the past, the present, and the future. That is the next great step for human beings to take. If we can inhabit the future, if we can live spiritually and exist consciously now within the future, then the future would look very different to the one that we are all facing. And when we talk about the great changes that need to be put in place, none of those changes can really unfold and happen unless each one of us, you and I, are prepared to step into the future consciously. That means every single act that we perform on a daily basis, not only comes with the knowledge of the past, the vivid beauty and wonder of the present, but also the great possibility of the future. At the moment, we are living in two zones. We live in the past and the present. We do not inhabit the future. Unless we are prepared, each one of us, individually, to consciously step into that place, then the future will continue to look as bleak as it does. If we can individually step into the future, own the future, embrace the future with each act that we perform, then we will have a different world. Then we will have what Joanna Macy describes as active, living hope. But we can only find that if we are prepared to step into the future. This will require a change of consciousness from each one of us. It will require, firstly, that we relinquish the ridiculous idea and concept of human dominion, that we are somehow in charge. What a totally ludicrous notion. And that we accept that each life form has been given the great gift of dominion not just human beings. If we are to inhabit a conscious state of living in the future, the past, the present, and the future, that trinity, then each act we perform will be done consciously with that in mind. And it really is as simple and as beautiful as that. If we had a political system that was where human beings, not politicians, human beings like us, were committed to inhabiting that future, the future place, the future consciousness, then we ourselves would be living in a different world. I cannot expect anyone to inhabit the future unless I am prepared to do it myself. So my challenge to you and to myself is that from this day forward, I begin to live as much in the past and the present as the future. Thank you.